Okay, welcome to the organic type modeling um, video where we're going to be covering our sculpt method of modeling, which is also known as like a T-form type of modeling. Um, this type of modeling is much more useful and effective for creating organic designs, uh, much more like a free form, billowy kind of structure rather than something like very clean cut and geometric, um, which is what we did with our uh, primitive modeling. Um, and so we're going to kind of walk through using this uh, create form tool, which used to be known as the sculpt environment. So that's probably what I'm going to refer to it as mostly. Um, so in order to get into this, actually, let's first go ahead and change our document settings to millimeters because we are creating a ring. So um, we want to work in millimeters. That's what jewelers work in just because it's much more accurate for like finger size. So document settings in millimeters. And then we're going to go ahead and create form. So this purple little blob or uh, under my create menu, there's a create form. So when I click on that, you can see that all of my tools up here have changed. Um, I have left my little modeling environment, the little world I've been using so far, and entered into my sculpt environment. So um, you can see that all the tools have look different now. They've all changed color. They're these purple tools. So anytime I'm seeing this subset of tools, these purple ones, I'm within the sculpt environment. Um, and I will stay in the sculpt environment until I hit this little finish form uh, checkbox. And once I hit that, I will exit out of the sculpt environment and back into the modeling environment that we're used to. So we can create a form in here that's like very organic um, and then take it back into our modeling environment where we can add primitive shapes, our primitive geometries that we've been using so far, um, or otherwise alter it in the same way that we did with our primitives using our modify menu. So it's just another uh, another system of modeling like a body essentially. So we're gonna go to our create menu and we have our same subset of primitives. They're just um, rather than solid bodies, so you can see they have a T-spline form, which means they're sub segmented and in, um, into these little segments. We're going to create a torus because that is the shape of a ring. So one of my two upright planes, um, doesn't matter which one, switch to snap to that view so I can see what I'm really doing. And at this point I want to, this is a little difficult, <laughs> um, modeling a ring precisely in this sculpt environment. Um, because I am going to be really manipulating my body and like pushing it and pulling it around So it does have the tendency sometimes to get out of round and not be perfectly round um, And I can fix that back in my modeling um, Environment, but I'm gonna get as close as I can to the size ring I want to make so um, If you don't know what ring size you are go watch the how-to video in the resources section on how to determine your ring size and I already know my ring size and the subsequent diameter that ring size requires. So I'm going to do 18 millimeters. Oops. I do that all the time. Um, I accidentally made it 264. So <laughs> let's change that back to 18. And uh, so that is this diameter right in here. Um, now I need to change this one, which is the diameter from my side view, so that it's something more like three. There we go. Three is like a wider women's band millimeters. Um, if you're making more of a men's band, you might want to do seven-ish. Actually, let's stick with three. Um, because you can see that this interior ring right there is my ring size, which is 18. Um, actually, let's go ahead and bump it up to 19 so that my actual ring size is right about in here. Um, 
Okay, we know it. Let's do 20. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can see the main difference between this type of body and um, the primitive bodies we've created in the past are these little segments. So my form is split into smaller chunks into these segments and that um, allows will allow me to mini manipulate it from each little section. So right now I am sub-segmented into eight sections from this view, but I can change that right here. Um, and also I can drag this little thing if I want it into, whoop, there we go. Oh, going fewer. Okay. I can add more if I need to create a lot more detail and a lot more like changes of direction. Um, I usually leave it for now. You can always add in more little subsections as you work. Um, so yeah, I have eight that way and four this way. So uh, that one's split into four. And again, I can change that if I need. Oops, that was less than four. Uh, there's six, eight. So up to you. I'm going to leave it at four. Palette, well, it's default. And I'm going to hit OK. So now I have this body. And the majority of um, modeling in the sculpting environment is modifying, like editing your form. So this edit form um, shortcut is right there. Or I can drop down and choose edit form from right there. And this is the the biggest tool, most effective, and um, the tool that has the most capabilities in the sculpt environment. So right now I have the option to move and change and edit a variety of different things. Um, three different types of T-spline entities. So I have um, faces, which are a big flat, flattish section. Um, I have an edge, which is one of these singular lines. And I have a vertex, so a vertice, one of the little points. So all three of those different things I can move and manipulate. So let's go ahead and click on this one. Actually, we're going to kind of be making a free form ring today uh, with no real direction, which is kind of fun. So I get my same little move menu that I'm used to in my modeling environment. Um, so I can pull on an arrow and that will pull the straight up and down with my little vertice straight up. Oh no. View cube broke. You can also choose this orbit down here in case that that happens. Oh, that's a little bit harder to control. Um, but you can see I just pulled that one straight up. And when I'm in my orbit, I have to hit my little X or escape button in order to get out of it. There we go. Ah, view cube. Okay. <laughs> it's going to be frustrating. So let's see what else we should move. Oh, yeah. When I'm moving that, also I can... This is not going to work. Hold on. I need to uh, probably close out fusion and restart it. We'll fast forward through this part. Got my view cube working. Um, so I was also going to show you I can move it side to side as well. Anytime I want to undo things, it is a little bit different than your modeling environment. Um, if I just hit cancel, it's going to commit the changes I did. So I actually need to undo those um, rather than just hit cancel. So I can pull that side to side. Um, I also can rotate using my little rotation tools. Can't really see what that's doing. So that will pull that side to side. And my little square icons right here are the same as in my modeling um, environment where I can just pull multi-directional. So that's kind of what we're doing. 
So that's me pulling a uh, vertex, but now I can also pull and manipulate faces as well. Um, I can choose to do two faces by holding shift or two or more of any type of key spline entity. Right now I'm doing faces, but I could also do edges if I wanted to. Um, so I can pull those out. I, I want to stay as close to round as possible in the center um, because I am making a ring. So maybe I'll just like flatten that a bit. Mm, what else? Maybe I'll pull this one out. So, whoops. This is definitely more a more um, a less regimented, more creative type of modeling. Um, it's more loose, I guess. Okay, so you can see I'm starting to create like a more interesting form, creating like a wave type band, um, adding some variety to the thickness of the band and really kind of trying to create some interesting curves going on so that it's interesting from all angles. Um, what else should I show you? Um, I can select an entire, so I told you I could select by holding shift down multiple edges um, or faces or vertices, but I can also just double click on one and it will select um, the tangent, so every one that is touching it essentially, and I can move all of those at one time if I would like to. Okay. I'm going to keep it right there. What else should we talk about? Um, a couple more tools you have at your disposal besides just pushing and pulling. Um, I can also, so far we've just been moving these T-spline entities, but I can also extrude, so like pull out a little section, um, which I would do from maybe, let's do one here from a face. Um, so... Before I start pulling, if I hold down my option key on a Mac and then kind of pull out, you can see I've created a whole new little blob, um, an extrusion that's come off of that face. I believe, can you do that with an edge? You might, there we go, okay. Yeah, I believe extrusions only happen with um, faces. And if I wanted to do that again, again, hold down my option key on a Mac and pull out and I've created another extrusion. Um, while that is highlighted, I also can change the size of it. So right now, um, well, it's just a shape it is, but I can use these little arrows and shrink it in, um, make that new face larger if I wanted to. I can also rotate it. So I do have a lot of capabilities to really manipulate my forms and create like much more organic, weird, strange um, shapes. What else can I do? Um, I also have the ability to add, I did tell you this, I can add in um, extra edges. Um, I can also subdivide a face, so let's do that first. Subdivide um, this face and it will just add in more edges and vertices so I can further manipulate. Um, okay, and add even more detail to that if I want to. I can hold option and push inward so then I start to create um, an interior extrusion, like a concave face, and I can also add in edges, so modify, insert, edge, um, 
select where I want to insert an edge. So if I just select a single one, it's going to put one right next to that. Only one right there. Um, if I double click this whoops, and select that entire edge, I can put a new one in there. Um, I can also insert one on each side of the face I've selected and then I can manipulate where exactly that edge is so it can be very close to my other one or further away. Uh, it defaults like right in the center but we'll see what that looks like. So I just added in an extra edge right there that I can further manipulate my form with. It's looking a little crazy to come gonna leave it like that. So those are kind of the basic tools and it really just requires you guys to really explore um, and mess around and push and pull things until you find something that you like. Um, when I'm happy with it I can go ahead and finish my form. So now I'm back in my modeling environment you can see all of my old tools that I'm used to. Um, and at this point, if I wanted to, I could add primitives, like I could create a sphere and move it up to hit my end key, this little interior curve if I wanted to, this concave surface, have a little hole in there. If I wanted to use my sphere to cut a, like, a little cup shape out of this. I can combine them. Um, so this is my target body, this is my tool body. Cut. Now I have a little like dimple cut out of there. Um, and I really can just play with it. Um, be creative. Okay, last thing I wanted to do is to kind of ensure that it's it fits me. Um, this is not like the most perfect way to do this. There's definitely more technical and precise ways. Uh, it's harder to do with the T-spline, the sculpt type of modeling. Um, easier to do with the sketch modeling, which is the process I'm going over for geometric rings. But we'll go ahead and do it the kind of quick, dirty way. So I'm going to create a cylinder right here. Oops based off the center and that I'm going to make my ring size. So my ring was an 18 and I want to go ahead and make it a new body first so that I can make it large enough to cut through the entire thing. Um, and then I'm going to move it so that it does kind of overlap the whole interior space. Okay, and now I will do the combine operation. My target body is my ring, my tool body is the cylinder, which is the size of my finger. And hit okay. So now I've kind of cut that interior space out so that it will fit me. It will be my ring size. Um, yep, and that's the basics of using the sculpt environment. Um, sculpt and T-spline type of modeling to create an organic foreign grain.